In the very beginning of this course, we learned that MongoDB is schemaless. That means we do not need a predefined schema for a collection to insert documents. And that is 100% true. MongoDB does not force you to define a schema for your documents, which you insert in a collection. You can have different fields and different types of fields in different documents in the same collection. For example, let's say here I have products collection. In this products collection, I have three product documents. Now, if you notice, in all these three documents, we have different fields. For example, in the first document, I have name, brand, color and price field. But in the second document, I have title, category, pages and price field. So both of these documents are completely different. Both of them has different fields. And you can also have different number of fields. So in the same collection, we have two documents which are completely different in structure. Both these documents are still describing a product, but they have completely different fields. And this is completely fine with MongoDB. MongoDB will not complain about it and it will allow us to store documents with different structures. That means different fields and different number and type of fields in the same collection. And that's why we say MongoDB is schemaless. It does not enforce any schema. But keep in mind that when we are building a real world application, you will need some kind of schema. Because if you are building the backend of your application, let's say you are building an online shop, there you might want to have a clear schema. For example, you might want to have a name and price for all your products and you might want to show them in the UI. Let's say you're building your application using Node.js and you're using MongoDB as your database solution. So when fetching the products using your Node.js application from the MongoDB database, you might want to cycle through all the products which you have fetched from MongoDB database and display it in the UI. And to display the details of all the products in the UI, you must have to know the fields in the product document because the field of a document stores the information about a given entity. So you have to know which fields are present in the document to show it to the user. And if you do not have a clear schema defined for your documents in a collection, you will not know which fields are present in which document. And hence, it will be very difficult to utilize the data stored in a collection of MongoDB in your application. And that's why we need some kind of schema for the documents in a collection. It makes working with data in MongoDB collection easier. So the point is, even if you don't need a predefined schema for a MongoDB collection, still you might want to define some kind of schema for the documents in a collection when building a real world application. This will make sure that you can work with data stored in MongoDB collection without any issues. Okay, so for example, if I want to display these product details in the UI, I will have to use the field name in order to access its value. So for example, I will say product.name, product.brand, product.color, etc. So if I'm using product.name to display the name of the product, for the first document, it will display the product name properly because there we have this name field. But for the second document, we don't have a name field. In that case, product.name will throw an error. So we will not be able to display the title, the name of this product. Because here, instead of having name field, we have title field. So as a backend developer, you do not know for which documents you have name field and for which documents you have title field. And that's why defining a clear schema for your documents is very important. In its most basic sense, we can say that a schema is a structured framework or plan. It's a way to organize and interpret information. That information can be data in the database, some concept in your mind, or the structure of a document. So a schema is nothing but a structure which tells how the data should look like. Now, when you are working with MongoDB, you have several ways in which you can define a schema. For example, in your collection, as we learned, you can have two different documents with completely different structure. And MongoDB will not complain about that because MongoDB is schemaless. It does not enforce any schema on the collection. So in a collection, you can have two documents with completely different structure. That means completely different fields and different types of field. 
But this is not something which you will need or which you will use when building real world application because here we do not have a predefined schema. Even though MongoDB allows us to store documents with a completely different structure in a collection, that is not the approach we use when building real world applications. Then we have this second approach. In this approach, you can have some fields present in all the documents, but some documents might have some extra fields, which is not present in other documents. For example, this name, brand and price field, it is present for all the documents in this collection. But the second document also have an extra size field. So some products might have this size defined. For those products, we might need this size field. But all the products will have a name, brand and price. So we can define a schema in such a way that we can tell that for each product we want to have name, brand and price field. But some of the products we might also want to have size field. And this type of schema we can use in real world applications. Here we have some extra field for some of the documents but the general schema is same. So in this approach we are defining some core fields which is present in every document. Then the third and most common approach is we have a clear schema for a collection. In this approach, all the documents will have the same field and same type and number of fields. For example, here if you see in this collection, we have three documents. Each document has this name, brand, color and price field. And each document has four and only four fields. No document has an extra field here. And no document also has a different field. All the documents has the same field and same number of field. So in this approach, the structure of each document is going to be same. And in this approach, we have a predefined schema for each product. And this is the approach we most commonly use for building real world applications. Now, one thing I want to make clear here is that out of these approaches, you can go with any approach depending on how you need to use data in your application. But most often we use the third approach where we define a clear schema for the documents in a collection. This is the approach used in production ready applications. You might also see second approach sometimes in some of the applications. So these two approaches are the most often used approach. And the first approach is rarely used in real world application. Because when we used first approach where we can have different fields for different documents and we can have different number of fields, it becomes very hard to work with such data. So let's go to Mongo shell. And currently we are in the eShopping database. Now on this eShopping database, let's see what are the collection we have. So for that we can say show collections. So these are the three collections which we have in this eShopping database. And currently on none of these collections, we have specified any schema. We have not added any schema for any of these collections. So what I can do is in this users collection, I can go ahead and I can insert any document. For example, here, if I say db.users.insert1 and let's try to insert a document. In this document, I'm going to have a name field. Let's say name is John and I'm going to have an age field. Let's say age is 28. Okay, let's also have a gender field and let's say gender is male. So this document which I'm inserting, it has three fields, name, age and gender. Let me go ahead and let me insert it in the users collection. So I'll paste that command here. And if I press enter, it is going to insert that document. So that document has been inserted. Now let me go ahead and let me add completely different fields here. For example, let's say title and let's say title is JavaScript course. Let's have price field here and let's say price is 128 and let's also have maybe color. Okay, color is green. Let me copy this and let's go ahead and let's try to insert this document. So if I press enter, you see that document has also been inserted. So we inserted two documents with completely different structure. Now this document here, which we have inserted just now, it does not represent a user. A user will not have a title property or a user will not have a price or color, right? User is going to be a person. So for a person, we can have name, age and gender field, but not title, price and color field. 
but still we are able to insert this information for a user in our users collection and that is wrong right and mongodb is not complaining about that because mongodb does not know that a user cannot have title price and color field and this is where we are using the first approach where two documents have completely different structure and since we have not enforced any schema on this user's collection we are able to insert a document with any data and that is not correct okay so that's why we need some kind of schema on our collection so that only the related documents can be stored in a collection so the takeaway from this lecture is even though mongodb collections does not require a predefined schema for the documents that we insert in it but it's very important that we define a schema when we are building a real world application otherwise it would be very difficult to use the data from the mongodb database in our application so in the next lecture let's learn how we can define a schema for a collection this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it Thank you for listening and have a great day.